Two big Second Amendment cases on their way to the United States Supreme Court that will definitely test the new makeup, and one of them is right up the alley of Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Stick by to learn more here on the next episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. If it is news that you're after regarding the Second Amendment, this is where you'll find it. So please consider subscribing to Guns and Gadgets. This is where you'll find all of that news, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. If you could, please hit that thumbs up and smash the YouTube anti-gun algorithm and share this with everybody you know. That will help as well. Now let's talk about these two cases. Both of these cases are coming out of the Third Circuit. And the first one I want to talk about affects several states. And we have different circuits in the U.S. that have differing opinions on the exact same subject, which is typically one of the things the United States Supreme Court likes to see before they, you know, take on a case. Now, real quick, neither case has been uh, before the court yet for, for their uh, certiorari. They're just on their way there. They both came through uh, the Circuit Court of Appeals, so the next step is the Supreme Court. Uh, but the first one, like I said, it affects many uh, different states is a magazine ban. Now this case was brought on by the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, and this challenges New Jersey's ban on any magazine or ammunition feeding device that holds more than 10 rounds. You know that 11th round makes you an assassin, and uh, New Jersey just doesn't want to have it. Now, there are other states that have these type of bans. Massachusetts is one, and California is another major one. And in fact, California's uh, ban on magazines was deemed unconstitutional, and that was Judge Benitez, yes, St. Benitez, uh, and that case is known as Duncan v. Becerra. Now, that case was accepted in the Ninth Circuit, Duncan v. Becerra, for an en banc uh, full panel, that's what that means, a full panel, uh, for an en banc review. Uh, they just haven't heard the oral arguments yet. Now, let's go back to the East Coast here in the Third Circuit case, and this case was denied an en banc review uh, by a decision of two to one that in essence upholds their ban on magazines holding 10 rounds or more. And the next step for the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs is to appeal before the United States Supreme Court. So that could be good. Now this is all assuming that should there be a Joe Biden uh, administration, he and Kamala Harris don't pack the court. So that's assuming the court stays the way it is right now. Now the second case I want to tell you about is the one that is literally uh, almost identical to a case that we've already heard from then judge, now justice, Amy Coney Barrett. You might recall that I did a video before she was uh, nominated about the Cantor case. And just a quick synopsis, the Cantor case, uh, Mr. Cantor was somebody who had uh, pled guilty to a mail fraud case. And this had to do with orthotics and billing with uh, Medicare. He pled guilty, and years later he was denied his Second Amendment rights because he was then determined to be a felon because he f pled guilty to mail fraud. And he sued to try to regain his rights. And he lost that case. However, Judge Coney Barrett at the time, she was the voice of the dissent, which means she wrote the opinion uh, that was against the, uh, the majority decision. And again, I'll just water it down real quick. She said that uh, the founders never intended for nonviolent felons to lose their rights. And that caused an uproar, not only in the Senate for the hearings, but in the gun control community around the nation. We've heard from every group you can think of. You name them Giffords, uh, Bloomberg, every town. They've all had something to say about her decision. And this case is basically the same. Now, anytime I mention that Cantor decision by Justice Barrett, there's always some comments that say the founders never intended or anybody to lose their rights. And in this case kind of addresses that. In 1938, Congress uh, decided that they would prohibit only gun ownership to those who were convicted of crimes of violence. And those crimes were uh, murder, manslaughter, rape, mayhem, kidnapping, burglary, housebreaking or breaking and entering nowadays, and various types of aggravated assault. And that changed in the 60s. And that's where anybody who was a felon was lumped into this gun ban. It's important to note that those congressional changes to their gun ban laws were put in place before both the McDonald and the Heller decisions, which guaranteed that the Second Amendment was an individual right. And that is paving the way for this case to go before the Supreme Court. Now, this case is, I'm going to try to pronounce it. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I butcher it. Folajtar, F-O-L-L. 
F-L-A-J-T-A-R, Falajtar versus the United States. And in this case, Lisa Falajtar was denied her Second Amendment rights because she pled guilty uh, to a tax evasion type charge. And this happened in 2011, and this was regarding her tax returns. That's not a, that's not a violent crime at all. So her resulting uh, sentence in this case was three years of probation, including three months of home confinement, house arrest, uh, $10,000 fine, and a $100 assessment. She also paid the IRS over $250,000 in back taxes, penalties, and interest. And for that, she can never own a gun again. So those cases are both on their way to the United States Supreme Court. There is a process that that would go under. That doesn't mean they're going to hear it. Doesn't mean they're even going to consider it. I will try to stay on top of that like I have every other Second Amendment case, a major case that's gone, at least tried to go before them. I want to take this time real quick to mention two channel sponsors. Uh, the first one is Big Daddy Unlimited. Now, Big Daddy Unlimited is a membership community that has tools and items that we all like and love at prices that are often below market. Uh, and the first month is 99 cents. Check them out down below. There will be a link to my website. And then from there, you can link to Big Daddy Unlimited because every time I put it up on the screen, they yank it. Uh, it's, you know, just bigdaddyunlimited.com slash the channel name, guns and gadgets, spell it out. We'll see what happens with that. But the USCCA, if you have decided that your life and your family and friends and loved ones' lives are worth you taking the responsibility to carry a firearm, then it's a good idea to make sure that you have some type of defense ready. God forbid you have to employ those tools and the USCCA will do that for you. You can head over to uscca.com slash gng to sign up. They have three different levels of membership. They have different ways you can pay and it is very worth it to me to have that stress already taken care of. God forbid that ever happens. All right, everybody, that's all I have for today. I hope you are having a fantastic Sunday. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Again, share it with 556 of your friends. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to Guns and Gadgets. As this community grows, the more the knowledge gets out, the more the word gets out to those of us around the country, and the better off we will be in the long run. Because whether we realize it or not, we all need each other in this fight. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon, and I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.